let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, our scripture today comes from both the Old and New Testaments. The first from 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. Hear the word of God. But the thing that David had chosen to do displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. And the rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with the children, and it used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But rather he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Well, then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, Well, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. Our second lesson comes from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 14. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. And when the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe and they ran toward, forward to greet him. He asked them, Why are you arguing? What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. And Jesus answered them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and it fell on the, he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It is often cast men into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you're able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, but help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Your, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind can come out only through prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Arthur Miller's tragic play, Death of a Salesman, he tells the story of Willie Loman, the quintessential mid-20th century salesman who wants to be and needs to be anything he can be to any person as long as it means a sale. He goes from account to account, customer to customer, deal to deal, trying to make something of himself and in the process loses himself. And along the way, he disappoints all the important people of his life and in the end, he meets a tragic death. And his son, Biff, stands over his grave at the end of the play and says, he never knew who he was. It's a haunting benediction, and it points to one of the most important pursuits of the human soul, to discover who we really are. From the very beginning of the Bible, the man and the woman wrestle with this question, who am I, or better yet, whose am I? Am I the creation of God put here to tend God's garden, or am I under the direction of the serpent who wants to disinherit me from the kingdom of God? 
Sometimes we don't even want to entertain the question because we're so busy pursuing other things, a, a name for ourselves, a, a standing in society, a, a certain balance in our bank account, a, a good score on the golf course, that we don't pay any attention to all of what is going on inside of us. Instead, we create a sort of false narrative of who we are. We make ourselves to believe that we are something that we're really not. The story of David that the Bible tells in a very unvarnished way is even more tragic than poor old Willie Loman in that David gets so out of touch with himself that he not only betrays the most important people in his life, he betrays himself. He gives in to the dark side of his personality and the stage is then littered with casualties. Bathsheba is violated, generals are implicated, Uriah is murdered, all to cover up something that David didn't want to face in himself. You are the man, Nathan says. In other words, take a close look, David, in the mirror. Which makes the story of the helpless father in Mark's gospel such a powerful one. He brings his imperiled son before Jesus at his wit's end. And Jesus says, all things can be done for the one who believes. And the father, exhausted, says the most honest thing he can think to say. I believe, but help thou my unbelief. He isn't worried about Jesus hearing that and seeing the real thing because that's where the real journey begins when we are as honest with ourselves as we know to be. It makes me think of Father Brennan Manning, the Roman Catholic priest who did his best to earn the love of God by accepting the hardest assignments a priest could accept and traveling the world and subjecting himself to the hardest conditions and serving the hardest of communities. And, and he does everything he thought he was supposed to do. He journeyed everywhere he thought to go, but what he was most afraid to do, as it turned out, was that he was afraid to travel inward, inside, the journey inward. And there he found finally the part of himself he didn't know, the stranger within. And he came to terms with all the ways he tried to paper himself over, including alcoholism. And so he took the deep dive to discover all those things that God already knew about him and found there that God loved him even still. Said Father Manning, to live by grace means to acknowledge my whole life story, the light side, and the dark side, and in admitting my shadow side, I learn who I am and what God's grace really means. You know, the great thing about life is that as long as we're living it, there's still time to discover who we are, to peel back the layers of false narrative and get to the honest truth of what we think and feel and what we're afraid of. And the promise of God is that God will meet us there and with our honesty will show us why he has put us here. It makes me think of a poem by Walt Whitman entitled, O oh Me, O oh Life. Hear Whitman's poem. O oh Me, O oh Life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, of myself forever reproaching myself for he more for who more foolish than I and who more faithless, of eyes that vainly crave the light, of the objects mean, of the struggle ever renewed, of the poor results of all, of the plodding and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless years of the rest with the rest me intertwined. The question O oh, me, so sad recurring, what good admits these, O oh, me, O oh, life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. We have so much to contribute, don't we, to this world. If only we would let God seize us, the real us, warts and doubts and deceptions all, and that with these fragile clay jars, we may end up possessing the treasured spirit of God who seeks to animate us for his glory. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to believe even in the midst of our unbelief 
and to open up our hearts that you may fill the deepest parts of who we are, even the parts we don't want to face ourselves. That there you may begin to make us into a new creation and allow us to be a vital part of your world to help bring your light to those who dwell in darkness. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.